everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious chicken casserole. This is a really great way to include some of those little parts of the chicken that not everybody wants to enjoy eating, so that's like the skin and the connective tissue, but Dr. Natasha talks about how important those are for the nutrients that you need for sealing leaky gut and for just overall good health in so many different areas. So I'm going to show you how to make a special gravy for this casserole that includes those. Nobody will even know that they're included. It's really delicious. This works for people on the GAPS diet and people not doing the GAPS diet will enjoy it too. So let's jump in. I'm going to show you how I make it. So to make this, I first start off by making a batch of chicken meat stock using a whole chicken. I also include feet and heads. You don't have to if you don't have them, but I always like to because they really add to the collagen in the finished meat stock. So I'll have a video where I show how I make chicken meat stock and I'll have that linked below so you can check that out. But I made, you can see my big pot here. I made chicken meat stock in here with a whole chicken. And then I also have carrots. So I took the chicken out of that pot once everything was done. Everything was cooked for three hours since this is a really big free range chicken. And then I just took the chicken meat out and you can see how I did the carrots when I made the meat stock. I just kind of really roughly cut them into really big pieces and that way they could cook really well over that longer cooking period of time but not be so small that they'd cook too much and get kind of lost in the liquid. So I will be using those in this recipe so I went ahead and had those cooked and then took them out and then I have the whole chicken here. So then here's the really important part of making this. I'm going to start separating out different parts here. I'm going to be taking the meat off of the chicken here and reserving that to use in the casserole and then everything else besides an actual bone is going to be going into this blender. So you'll see that that's going to include the skin. I will just pull that off and then any connective tissue that's there that's not meat and then any cartilage. So like these little caps of cartilage that goes onto these bones, we're going to put that in. So everything that's not an actual bone and then meat I'm going to reserve over here. And so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go through this whole chicken and separate everything out that way. Meat over here, bones, you could save to make bone broth if you are to that point. That's not a gaps in intro food, but if you're not on GAPS you can enjoy bone broth or if you're much later on full GAPS after you've done your healing with meat stock then you could choose to do that if you want to. Or you can compost the bones, that works too. But basically you're going to be left with very little after doing this. When all the skin and connective tissue and cartilage and the meat is all taken off there's not much left. So I'm going to go through and sort everything out. This little part of the breastbone, this big cartilage thing, very important to include that. Now you can see, like you could do, if you had a lot of time, you could do an even more thorough job like getting every tiny bit of connective tissue off of there, but this is real life and I don't have that kind of time. But as you can see, like there's not much left here. This is just bones. And then we've got a bunch of connective tissue here and then our carrots and a lot of meat. This is one pretty good sized chicken. I don't remember how many pounds it was, but the ones that we raised are pretty big, but I'm gonna easily get two casseroles out of this. And I think in general, if as long as you have a decent sized chicken for this recipe, you can 
can plan on getting two casseroles, two 9 by 13 pans out of this. So then I have my carrots here. Okay, so I'm just going to temporarily set these carrots here. And then this little bit of meat stock that's here in the bottom, I'm just going to add that to the blender. So then now I have a pan that's ready to go. So then I'm going to put half of the meat in one pan and half in the other. So just splitting it up. And I like to make sure that the big pieces like of the white meat and everything are nice and shredded small and just kind of put that in a nice layer like that. And then at this point, we're gonna start adding some of the vegetables. So I have these carrots that were cooked at the same time as the meat stock. So they're already nice and soft, which really makes it nice when this goes into the oven for its final baking step, it's nice and quick. So I'm just going to just dice these up and then put half over each casserole. As far as peeling vegetables go, like carrots for this type of a recipe, I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't, except that it just takes extra time and I usually am trying to save time in the kitchen. So I will sometimes peel carrots, like if I'm having them with a roast or something, just because it looks really nice when it's finished. And you could do that for this dish too, but if time is an issue, there is no reason that you have to, unless you're like really, really, really trying to avoid all kinds of fibrous vegetables, then you might be peeling all your carrots anyway, so that would be a reason. But in any other situation, I would say peel them if you want to, but if you don't have time, don't worry about it. And I did not peel them, obviously, this time, so. Okay, now the next step is to go ahead and add some other vegetables. I'm gonna be adding green beans. My favorite is actually peas to add with this, but you can do green beans instead, which is what I'm doing today, just because I don't have peas. Either one is delicious. Next, we're ready to do our magic sauce here. So we have our connective tissue in here. So to make this blend up really nicely, we're gonna wanna add a little bit of meat stock, just enough liquid so that it can blend. We don't want too much because if it's too liquidy, then it's a thinner kind of a gravy when it's warm and we want it thick. So for this amount of connective tissue, I'm probably gonna add about one cup of meat stock. Yeah, so I have, I just added a ladle. I had a little bit from that pan, if you remember before. And it's like not even covering what I have in there. It's just almost coming up to the top. And then I'm gonna take it to my blender. And then this Blendtec blender that I have has a bunch of different settings. It has a soup setting, which blends stuff really, really super smooth. So that's what I like to use for this. Whatever blender you have, you just wanna make sure that you get it blended nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend it. All right, so now we have that blended up and you can see it's a nice gravy, amazing flavor. And as you know, and but no one else needs to know, is that there's incredible nutrition in there too. So the last thing that I like to do before pouring this into the pan is to add a little bit of seasoning to it. So I, you could use like a poultry seasoning blend or I have this Italian seasoning blend. So I probably add about a teaspoon or so to this amount and then a little bit of salt. It's easy to get, I think it's because it was already cooked with salt when it was made into meat stock. It can be easy to get this too salty. So I go just really lightly, just a little sprinkle of salt. And then I just kind of blend that together or just stir it in. I don't run it in the blender because I want the spices to still be recognizable because I think it looks nice to see the little spices in the gravy part of it. And then another thing that I like to do is add some fat. This is a really nice way to hide fat in there. If you have rendered chicken fat, that would be amazing but you can use any other animal fat that you like, tallow, lard, ghee, 
I'm just gonna add some butter. You don't wanna go too overboard with this just because when the casserole is hot, when the casserole is hot, it'll thin out the gravy quite a bit. So I'm just gonna add like a nice, generous few tablespoons or so and then stir that in. It's nice and hot so it will melt. All right, and then just, yeah, stir that in until you can see that it's all melted. And then at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and pour it into the casserole dishes, about half in each one. And somewhere in this whole assembly process, I do go ahead and turn on my oven to start preheating at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the last thing to do before it goes into the oven is to mix up a topping. And also, you can just do it just like this with no topping. I've done that before and that's really delicious. But I do like to do some kind of a little topping. So I have some cauliflower. This is riced cauliflower. You can get it already done like this in frozen bags. That's organic from Costco or other places have it too. So I just have a bunch of that that I've defrosted. About eight cups here. I don't think you need quite this much, but this works too. It's just the amount that I have in the packages that I get. So then I have six eggs here that I'm just gonna beat. And then I'm also gonna add just a little sprinkle of salt. And then I'm just gonna add these and mix this together. Probably should have gotten a bigger bowl. That's a problem that I run into a lot. If this happens to you, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm always underestimating the size of bowl that I need and then I find out that I should have used a bigger bowl. But we just wanna mix those guys all around. I am gonna add just a little bit of pepper to this too and on the casseroles too. I forgot I usually add a little pepper in the gravy, so I'm just gonna add that on there. All right, and then just finish mixing. Once that is all mixed together, I'm just gonna put half on each casserole. You can leave it in like biscuit shapes or just spread it around. I usually like to just spread it around. And then at this point, they're ready to go into the oven. So I have the 375 degree Fahrenheit oven and they'll go in for, my green beans were still a little bit frozen. So it just depends on how thawed your vegetables and different things were for how long it's gonna need to go in there. But you just wanna make sure that the bottom portion, the vegetables and meat is heated through nicely and that the egg part of the cauliflower topping is cooked. So that's usually 35, 45 minutes. I'll usually start checking on them after about 30 minutes and kind of see where they're at. All right, so they're all done baking. I pulled them out of the oven, so now they're ready to just dish up and serve. So I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Check out that description box for links to where I like to buy a lot of my ingredients, as well as free eBooks and other goodies. If you're interested in the GAPS diet, I have a 30-day meal plan for the GAPS diet. I also have a program where I coach clients through the GAPS diet. That's a wonderful place to get support and lots of questions answered and guidance as you're going through the GAPS diet. So check out that description box for links to those as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think needs another really nutrient dense dinner idea. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.